Hello everyone. Now we are going to discuss about the static IV catches of a thyristor. Static IV catches of a thyristor is nothing but a plot between the anode voltage VA and your anode current IA. So here uh, basically you can see here your thyristor which is connected across the supply voltage which it can be varied. You can apply a positive voltage or a negative voltage. That by magnitude the voltage can be controlled. Also it can be reversed in the particular circuit which is shown on the left hand position. Now three modes of operation we will be discussing it over here. One is known as the reverse locking mode, second one is the forward locking mode and third one is the forward conduction mode. So first we will be seeing the reverse locking mode. For that purpose we will see the particular uh, thyristor over here. That is a PNPN device where we having three junctions are there. For the reverse locking mode what we are trying to do is that we will be giving the anode a negative supply voltage and the cathode a positive voltage. So that will result in the junction J1 and J3 to be reverse biased and the junction J2 to be forward biased. So as you know in the case of a small PN junction diode, whatever the reverse characteristics what we see over here is similar to the reverse characteristics of a thyristor. So if this is from the center point though, what happens is that when you are trying to increase your voltage in the negative direction that is minus VA is applied across the device, what happens is that it will result in a small flow reverse leakage current. So whatever it is showing over here from O to P, I will name it as reverse leakage current. So this is nothing but the reverse leakage current. Reverse leakage current. Now, when we are trying to increase the negative voltage, what happens is that we reach a voltage which is nothing but the VBR, that is the reverse breakdown voltage, it will result in an avalanche breakdown of the system. And because of the avalanche breakdown, what happens is that there is a sudden increase in the current. So, this from P to Q, it is nothing but the avalanche breakdown. Now, from O to P, we say it as a reverse blocking mode. So, this is a reverse blocking mode. And this from P to Q, it is nothing but the reverse avalanche breakdown region. Reverse avalanche breakdown region. So this is what is happening during the reverse blocking mode. So this voltage VBR is nothing but the reverse breakover voltage, reverse breakover voltage and normally your uh, reverse breakover voltage will always be lower than the forward breakover voltage. It is basically because of the change in the doping levels of the inner regions of your thyristor. Now, next we will be seeing about the forward blocking region. Now, we are going to discuss about the forward blocking region or the forward blocking mode. So, in this region, what we are trying to do is that your anode is made positive and your cathode is negative. Anode is positive and cathode is negative. So, this will make the junction J1 and J3 to be forward biased and junction J2 to be reverse biased. So, what happens is that there will be small amount of forward leakage current which is flowing through the system. There will be small amount of forward leakage current which is flowing in the system. So that canvases we can draw it over here like this. So this is nothing but your forward blocking mode. That is a small amount of leakage current is flowing through the system. So that is nothing but the forward blocking mode. That is nothing but the forward blocking mode. Now we will be seeing how it is going to the conduction mode. So during this period of the forward blocking mode, the device will not go into the conduction mode as the junction gateway is already in the reverse biased condition. So the minority carriers are helping the leakage current to flow in the system. Now we will see how we the if the device goes to the forward conduction region. Now we are going to discuss on the forward conduction mode. So in the forward conduction mode, the forward conduction mode, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to increase the voltage across the device. 
that is the positive voltage which is applied across the anode and the cathode we are trying to increase. When we are trying to increase the positive voltage across the anode and cathode, what happens is that this reverse bias junction, the depletion layer vanishes away and this there will be this, there will be a small increase in the current and it reaches to a point where it reaches the avalanche breakdown point that is where the point it is nothing but VBO it corresponds to the forward breakover voltage VBO now when the voltage reaches VBO what happens is that the device goes into the conduction mode when the device goes into the conduction mode the voltage across the device tends to a lower value it may be 1 or 2 volts we can just imagine as a switch so when the device is going to the conduction mode the voltage across the device gradually reduces and it becomes 1 or 2 volts and the current starts increasing and the current starts increasing like this the current starts increasing like this so I will name this point as M and this point as N so the device which was acting like a switch the device was acting like a switch the switch was open till where till the point m it was acting like an open switch now at the point m it reaches the breakover voltage vbo what happens is that the switch goes to a close condition when it goes to a close condition the voltage across the device becomes reduced that is why the voltage from here to here it traverses so at this point it may be one or two volts and here it may be few hundreds of volts hundreds of volts will be there now the device has gone to the conduction state so I will name this as point K now this point from M to N is nothing but the device goes from the on off state to the on state and from N to K it is nothing but the forward conduction mode is nothing but the forward conduction mode so far our discussions work with your uh, thyristor in the forward first condition that is anode is positive and cathode is negative and your gate circuit is in the switch is open so you can see over here the gate is in the so all these discussions are in the gate circuit in the open condition now what we are trying to do is that we are trying to turn this switch onto the on position that is we are trying to apply a gate signal now till now when we have it applied the gate terminal that means at this point vbo at this point vbo we can say that your current gate current ig is zero the gate current ig is zero now just imagine that I am trying to increase the gate current. I am trying to increase my gate current. So when I am trying to increase this gate current, what happens is so this gate current I am trying to increase. So when this gate current is getting increased, what happens is that the device needs a lower voltage across the anode and cathode to get it into the conduction mode. That means for the current IG0, for the current IG0, IG equal to 0 it was requiring a voltage of VBO now I am trying to increase my gate current when the gate current is increased the amount of forward voltage which is required across the device to turn into the conduction mode is lesser so we can say that if I am applying a value of IG1 current if I am applying an IG1 current where IG1 is greater than IG which is equal to 0 then it will require a voltage so it will goes into the turn goes into the turn on mode at a lower voltage than VBO so this I will name it as VBO1 now just imagine that I am again increasing your current IG I am still increasing my current IG so what happens is that it will again goes into turn on mode at a lower voltage VBO2 so this is VB O2 which is corresponding to the current IG2 again if I am increasing my current IG that is the gate current if I am increasing 
what happens is that the device gets turned on at a much faster rate and it will require only a lower voltage of VB03. So this corresponds to the current IG3. So from these discussions we can write it as IG3 greater than IG2 greater than IG1. During those periods what happens to your VBO? You can write VBO as VB03 lesser than VB02 lesser than VB01. And here also you can write it as greater than IG less than VBO. So we discussed about the three modes of operation, reverse blocking mode, forward blocking mode and the forward conduction mode. And the region over here is nothing, this is nothing but your forward blocking mode and this is nothing but your forward conduction mode. Now uh, two important parameters we have to discuss over here that is nothing but your latching current and the holding current. So once the device goes into turn on condition that is there is a flow of anode current and if that anode current is uh, greater than a minimum value of current known as the latching current then you can remove your gate circuit from the system. So without the gate signal the system will be able to conduct it. The device will not go into the turn off mode once you remove your gate signal if the anode current is greater than a, uh, is a greater than a particular value and that current is nothing but your latching current which is named as IL. Now from the forward conduction mode the device has to be switched off. For doing that particular purpose what we have to do is that we have to turn it from the forward conduction mode to the forward blocking mode. So in order to do that you have to reduce your anode current that is the anode current has to be reduced to a lower value than your latching current. So if the anode current falls below a low value then the system will be moving away from your forward conduction mode to the forward blocking mode. So that you can mention it over here and this as the holding current IH. So the device will get turned off once the current is anode current is below the holding current IH and therefore we can say that IL is associated with turn on process and IH is associated with turn off process and holding current is always lesser than your latching current IL. What are discussions which you have made till now is being put together here and this is nothing but the static IV carriers of a thyristor and here you can see your holding current you can see your holding current here you can see your latching current and this is nothing but your forward blocking mode and the forward leakage current and this is the forward conduction region and this is the reverse blocking region and the reverse leakage current and this is nothing but the reverse avalanche breakdown region. So VBO is always greater than VBR the forward breakout voltage is always greater than VBR by because of the difference in the doping level in the inner regions. So whenever you draw the static IV carousel system always uh, draw it by understanding the concept why did we draw each and every one and what is the procedure we have to follow it while drawing the IV carousel to explain the system and this is a very important topic which you need to understand in order to understand how the concept of latching current and holding current is very important in the case of turning on and turning off process of that particular system because we have already mentioned that the thyristor is a semi-controlled device. SCR is a semi-controlled device. You have the control only for the turning on process and turning off process. You do not have any control over that. So for that purpose you need to have other kind of circuits which have to be integrated into the system and where the importance of holding current comes into the picture. So that is where we are ending up with the static IV case of the thyristor.